good morning students welcome to second class of uh, the boilers regarding description of boilers the first one is the babcock and wilcox boiler in the previous class we have discussed regarding the classification of boilers now we shall see regarding this babcock and wilcox boiler in the figure you can see that there is a boiler access shell this is mounted in horizontal in nature here you can see the tubes through which the water is being passed known as the water tubes the furnace which you are seeing here it is located outside of this boiler shell which means it is externally fired boiler this is stationary in nature this boiler shell generally it is used in steam power plants to develop a steam for a pressure range of 10 bar to 20 bar in some cases about 20 bar also the main parts of this boiler are the boiler drum the downtake header you can see here this downtake header has water tubes which are inclined at uh, some angles and this is in the range of 15 degrees to 20 degrees uptake header the furnace and this entire structure of the boiler shell it is placed upon the brickwork you can see here this is the brickwork see here brickwork entirely this is also the brickwork in some textbooks along with this brickwork here he has shown some iron girders also therefore a babcock and wilcox boiler it is an a naturally circulated water tube externally fired stationary boiler used for the generation of steam its parts are manhole steam stop wall for the collection of steam anti priming pipe safety wall this is the drum pressure gauge to check the pressure water level indicator to check the level of water present inside this boiler shell feed check wall uptake header downtake header the fire door the grate where the combustion of the fuel takes place ash pit for the collection of ash you can see the baffle plates two baffle plates mud collector at the bottom here blow off valve damper water tubes c shaped structure superheater and chimney first of all water is taken into the boiler shell with the help of feed chuck valve it is this part through which water is passed into this drum shaped drum it is filled up till the three fourth of its entire size three fourth portion you can see one fourth portion is left for the collection of steam itself so the level of water it is being checked with the help of a water level indicator as the water is being filled certainly some amount of water it is passing through this tube to the downtake header position where you can see a set of inclined tubes are present through which the water is being stored once the combustion of fuel begins here they develops the hot gases these hot gases they pass over the surface of these water tubes and they try to give away their heat to the water completely present inside the tubes thus the water present in the tubes it goes on absorbing the heat from the hot gases produced by combustion and then the steam is being developed as the steam is being developed we can see here as these pipes are in an inclined position the density of steam it is lighter when compared to the water therefore the steam developed it escapes passes through the uptake header from the water and gets collected in this space you can see here some you know, white colored space structure this is the known as a steam space where the steam is been collected 
So <clears throat> the hot gas which are developed here, they need to give away their heat completely to this uh, inclined water tubes. In order to do that, we are providing two baffle plates. You can see one baffle plate is here, another baffle plate is here. The purpose is whatever the hot gases they are developed here, they pass through this set of tubes, then passing through the superheated tube, they are being diverted here. Again, they pass through the water tubes, come to this portion, again it is diverted here, and then after they are doing, they are giving their heat, they are passing with the help of damper, and then they flow towards the chimney. If the baffle plates are not provided here, then what happens? Directly these hot gases, they move towards the chimney itself. In order to have more amount of heat transfer rate, the baffle plates are being tried to see that the hot gases give maximum amount of the heat to the water present in these tubes as well as for the water steam present in the superheater also. The steam which is developed here, which is collected here, sometimes it may be a wet steam also. If it is a wet steam, already we have discussed, we are very much interested to use dry steam or superheated steam. So to convert it to dry steam or superheated steam, what do we hear? Once again, this wet steam is taken through this tube and passed into the superheater. Again, the superheater is placed in the chamber itself where the hot gases are coming continuously. So again, these hot gases transfer their heat to the steam present in this superheater tube and convert this into a dry steam or a superheated steam which is taken through the steam stop wall for the turbine blades operation. Once the boiler is under maintenance, we need to clean it off. At that time, with the help of this manhole, it is open. The person enters through this uh, hole and he cleans the boiler shell to remove the salt deposits or mud contents and other things also. Sometimes the steam which is developed here, suddenly the pressure of the steam may exceed beyond the limits. At that time, the safety wall which is present here, it suddenly opens and escapes the steam to the atmosphere. Just like the pressure cooker at your home, after the exceeding its pressure of the steam present inside the cooker, it moves upwards and develops a whistle. The same working phenomena. Pressure gauge, which is mounted here to check the level of uh, the pressure of the steam developed inside the boiler shell. Water level indicator is being provided to check the level of water present inside the boiler shell fire door through which the fuel is being provided and is seen for combustion. Sometimes the water which you are using here is having some mud particles or salt particles. They come and collect here at the bottom also. They are in this position known as the mud collector. It is taken out with the help of the blow of valve and it is cleaned onwards. So, this is the working of the Babcock and Wilcox boiler. Thank you, students.